All right. So welcome to the channel. Today, I thought we would uh, discuss a new cat that I got. Uh, as many of you know, I'll rescue cats. I don't just do Section 8 consulting and stuff like that. We haven't given her a name yet. Uh, what I do know about her is she's Siamese. She's about a year old. Um, right now, she's woefully underweight. Uh, had some pretty bad owners. And uh, so it's a pretty tough story. And you can see the scars on the ears and... Uh, well, today, I think she's just trying to adjust. So we're going to, like if you've seen any of my cats from the early days, uh, I'm store a lot of them to their former glory. So we're going to work on her a little bit. We're going to go see the vet. Oh, so if you can see her eyes, she's got the blue ones. So I don't want to make her uncomfortable. So we'll let her move around. She's also been pregnant. Uh, she's barely even a year old, so. This is probably the work of uh, one of these damn breeders. And she's probably the, the undesired result because of the color and all. So, Anyways, we're going to be working with the old girl there. And I think we're going to put up a, uh, a boat uh, to give her a name. And uh, I've already got her situated uh, in the bedroom with me while she adjusts. So, <laughs> She's a big cat like most Siamese. And she does a little talking. But I think uh, right now she's probably a little bit broken on the inside. So she's a little bit limpy. But uh, you give it a few months, and I'll bring it back. Uh, so you know how that goes. <laughs> so today I went out to get cat collars and ended up uh, having to do this rescue. And to be frank with you, um, there was no way uh, I was going to leave this cat out there like that. So we got her dressed up, and uh, she is somewhat emaciated. Um, I'm working through those issues, and then we'll see the vet uh, Monday. I'm taking the whole crew in. Many of y'all know Big Pops, the big um, – you might even see him pass along here. So – and uh, I think we have a total now. We're back up to 19 cats. Um, there are my primary cats that are in the house. And then there's some that are indoor, outdoor. And there's some that just come and visit us. There's a big bear back behind us. And my other Siamese, I believe she's a little bit jealous right now. So we're not seeing a whole lot of her. She didn't. <laughs> a little bit here decided to hop up in her main cat tower. So we have a big cat tower. I'll show it to you all real quick. So there's a cat tower behind my drill. I use a second floor up here uh, as a little bit of an office and uh, recording area. So I have a lot of different things up here. Neat thing is for a new cat, this is plenty of curiosity. So, man, she looks like she's doing her up today. I think she's having a hard time adjusting to my other cats. They're all getting along. Come here, mama. She may just be tired. Oh, mama. Oh, man, my girl. Yeah, she may just be tired. Oh. So we got to get some skin and uh, got to get some meat on her bones. I can't seem to get her to eat and drink yet. Uh, I think that's probably just nervousness. And she looks like she lost a lot of her fur. Uh, they probably had her in a cage for an extended period of time because uh, her feet are messed up and she walked strangely. So that tells me they had one of those rabbit cages. You know, I'm going to give it some severe opinions here real quick. Uh, I understand there are good breeders and there are bad ones. Uh, those, you know, the bad ones, to really, if I had an option to put my hands around their neck and uh, help them expire early, I would. It's infuriating. The shit they do is just, I hope they get their day. I really do. Because uh, this, this is the problem I have, <coughs> trying to help these animals get back to where they are. Because they get damaged inside and out. Um Anyways, Mary Sample, welcome to the channel. Uh, Mercedes Lewis, I want a Linux. I've heard some neat things about Linux. Um, Gail Resources, how's it going? Nice playground for her. Squeeze hard. Yeah, she's going to spend uh, about a week with me in the bedroom. And i got to figure out what she likes, what she wants to eat, and uh, just try to make her feel, uh, you know, important. Right now, she's just um, doing her own thing. One thing about her is uh, she'll love you very much. Uh, she rubbed on me for a good three, four hours. Um, just, uh, you know, just, I guess she's very appreciative or whatever it may be. But uh, so a lot of work there. But uh, I think in a few months, she'll be as frisky as my other Siamese. Uh, I think she needs to gain about four or five pounds. And uh, her hair coat's pretty bad. You know, patches missing, patches missing on the ears and all that. But these are all things we can fix, you know. 
So anyways, I'm, uh, this is going to be a short video. I just thought I'd introduce you all to the newest family member. If any of you all have names in mind, if you like cats, you like pets, doesn't matter if it's a cat, it can be a dog, a gerbil, anything but a damn spider. You all know how I feel about spiders. These are my spider killers. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I understand uh, some people like to have pet spiders. But I don't do that. It doesn't work for me mentally. <laughs> <clears throat> so... <clears throat> hopefully we get a good bets report for her and this will be the, her last pregnancy. There's no reason for a cat that young, barely a baby having a baby like that. So, um, yeah, so she'll be able to live out her best years here. I think, uh, there's, uh, another cat I'm looking at. Um, he's 11 years old and, uh, he's in pretty bad condition and I'm see about what I can do about that later this week. So, you know, Look, this is not for everybody. There clearly are people that sometimes collect too many cats and uh, they let the, you know, the condition of their home deteriorate. I don't live in that kind of home. I take, I have people that come in and keep things pristine. So it wouldn't matter if I had 58 cats. I have the ability and the financial means to uh, keep things uh, as clean as any pet store or better. <laughs> so I'm never worried about how many cats I have, but it generally rotates between the 16 to 25 mark. I don't think I've ever reached 25, but I've had up to 22 at a time. So, um, but yeah, she'll be with us permanently. And then we'll see what happens with, I'm going to call him Big Bob. This is a real big Tom I saw. And um, I'm going to find out what his story is and see whether or not I can get the owners to turn him over to me. So um, we'll see. Anyways, I've enjoyed making this short little video. I just want to introduce you all to the newest little family member. We'll put the votes up on the community page. So for those that don't know, uh, our YouTube channel has a community page, kind of like a Facebook. Um, you post different information, pictures, videos, so on, not the main page. So when you click on my photo, it'll bring you to the main page. On the main page is a bar, like a website, and on there are links. And uh, where it says community, you can see all kinds of stuff I post about. That is where I'm going to put the vote for her name. Um, there are a lot of names already taken, like uh, Sweet Babies. I've been calling her Pretty Girl uh, to kind of inspire a little bit. And I think uh, after this video, we'll start with a little bit of fleeing because I'm not excited about having fleas pop out of my hair tonight. Um, but, you know, we can only do so much at one time. Bets are not notorious for being open on the weekend. So, uh, like I said, we're working through issues. I don't want to traumatize her. Uh, Gail Resources, my baby just went over the bridge last week. Well, that doesn't sound good, Gail Resources. What do you mean you went over the bridge? <laughs> That didn't sound good at all. If your cat hopped over the bridge, uh, what happened? <laughs> In my candy, how are you doing? Glad to see you here. So, yeah, what else can we do with a Saturday? There probably won't be a video Sunday because I'm still catching up with company consults because, you know, the primary purpose of the channel is I don't just rescue cats. I spent most of my career rescuing people from low, in, you know, to help them from shelters and homelessness and other issues. So I certainly always have my hands full uh, between the two and I enjoy it immensely. I always tell people, uh, you know, you can have the fanciest new iPhone. You can spend your money that way, or you can, you can spend it trying to help people, you know, how you go in this world and how you take your last breath is always an option and a choice. And trust me, when you go, that new iPhone, that fancy new car with the big rims and uh, the new washer and dryer, that shit ain't going to make you happy. <laughs> it that kind of stuff will never love you back. And besides, it's always something you'll have to buy bigger and better. At least these animals will definitely respect you. They'll honor you. And if you get to know them well enough and they trust you, uh, they're lifelong friends. Um, and that's the main thing, whether it's a cat, a dog, or any conceivable animal that uh, has an understanding that you're trying to do the right thing by them. And that's the point. Uh, and so Gail Resources says in the comments section, by the way, this is a live video. You can obviously chat with me. Gail Resources says, nope, euthanize. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, you know, I went through two, two of my 16-year-old cats recently, and uh, that was hard. Um, bought uh, one of my headstone. Looks like she's taking a snoozing. So I expect her to be very much under my feet, and I'm not going to leave her alone. Um, she'll be trying to keep the stimulation going because when you're locked into a cage for most of your life, the cat doesn't uh, understand what the whole outside world is about. So we're slowly doing introductions. 
and uh, trying to increase stimulation and other issues, you know. You can't just use animals for breeding. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Hi, Jay. I love I loved animals. I appreciate that, in my candy. So um, let me show you a few more things, guys, since we're talking about pets today. Because I know some people, when I make videos for my primary topic for this channel, some people don't, you know, they don't want to, they want to hear about advice. They don't want to hear about the cats. So let me bring out a few things I bought from the pet store y'all might like um, for some of our cats. Now, I got to tell you, this was like a little small house note. <laughs> you ever put, you get those tags for uh, cats and dogs at those machines. It's pretty nickel. Um, so, Sweet Babies, my other Siamese. We got her some bling bling. Of course, you're seeing it in reverse, but that's it. And no, it's not as heavy as it looks. Actually, the inside is a very lightweight. And the outside's a little bit of metal. And uh, Big Papa, I got him some bling bling. So I think I did pretty good with that. And then Pops, uh, the rescue that I had, uh, gosh, over a year and a half ago, the little baby that was not even half the size of the palm of my hand. Uh, took me $1,000 or more uh, to keep him, uh, to get him back to life. When you take a cat before it's been weaned, they don't have a very chance to live. So this is Pops. We'll upgrade him to bling when he gets a little older. So I'm working through it. I mean, that's 80 bucks for those three things. And I only have the cat colors. And if anybody can chime in and tell me why I'm driving around the city of Houston and I can't get a cat collar, I can get them, but I can only get the cheapest, worst ones, you know? Uh, every aisle, Walmart, Target, so on, everywhere you have pet sections, all the colors are gone. It's like not only through the pandemic have we had a toilet paper run, but apparently everybody's decided their cats need collars. Because the only thing left at this point is really just buying a lamp cord and wrap it around the cat's neck. Uh, because of the options there, uh, I'm not taking nothing hot off the boat from China. You know, if I'm going to buy something that it needs to be safe and reasonable, and so the few options left in the store obviously probably are safe and reasonable, but I don't want them. <laughs> I love my cats too much to buy them dollar store shit, you know. <laughs> Not to be too vain, but I, I would rather the cat have a reasonable collar. So we got three done. Boy, we got a long ways to go with that. So uh, a few comments rolling through. Uh, in my candy gallery, so I had to get, okay, so while it's cool, same here. Didn't have many of the collars. That could, you know, that might be a supply issue around around the world. I don't know. Capri Lux, hey, Jay, we spoke yesterday from New Jersey. Hey, Good to see you in the channel. Today, I'm a little bit off topic, by the way. Like I said, we're talking about cats. It's a cat video. So, you know, I'm always injecting my personal life. But now I've learned to just start bringing the cats into separate videos. And I suppose if people don't like it, they can just go to hell, you know. <laughs> There's Big Papa back behind me. He's on the hunt uh, today. And we've been experimenting with different types of treats. One thing cats are, I've learned, is... You got to mix things up. They don't, uh, at least mine, don't like the same stuff all the time. You know, in a single month, we go through $100 in treats. When you have that many cats, and if I told you how much cat litter. So, um, because I teach the cats to be indoor, outdoor, for obvious reasons. It cuts down on the litter box. I like the litter boxes to be more of a porta potty, where you, if you really got to, go. But otherwise, uh, I like them to go see my neighbor, which I can't stand. It's shit in his yard, to be frank with you. But <laughs> uh, I like to do training to indoor, outdoor because they get additional stimulation. When you leave a cat in your home all day where you're at work, there's no stimulation, no sound, no nothing. It's just pure quiet. Um, so I uh, to put in the cat door so they have the ability to come and go. And my cats are pretty good. I can actually drive out to, you know, to the baseball field and put them out the car and then know exactly where to come back to. So I've trained them well. Um, in my case, uh, same here. They don't have many cat collars in stores. Yeah, there's definitely been a run on cat collars. Um, uh, in my candy goes on and say, did you, did you check Amazon? I've been checking. The problem is um, I'm not understanding the sizes on these cat collars. I've never 
really bothered that much with them. I've always let the cat just be as natural as possible. But um, one thing uh, I wanted to ensure is that my cats have a chip. And I struggle with that because I don't like modifying animals. But um, the reason behind the chip is this. If they ever got loose, and one did one time, Big Pops got loose. And he ended up going down to uh, the city uh, pet rescue. I tell you something about those guys. They they will neuter your cats and spade those cats without any anesthesia. When he came back, he was erect. He was uh, partially in seizures and foaming at the mouth. This is how the city of Houston handles shit. They pull out a rusty pair of scissors and they your animals up. Uh, I seriously consider filing a lawsuit against them, including the trapper. What I wanted to do was put that guy out of business, leverage his ass so hard that every paycheck he ever makes would go to me. And then take every living asset he had. That way his little shit company gets shut down. I didn't proceed with that, but I probably should have. So anyways, the chipping, what it does is it prevents cats from being put down. So if one got away for some reason, it went too far, it got picked up and trapped, that chip can be scanned per regulation city, and they wouldn't be able to touch my cat at that point. Uh, but I'm looking at GPS collars as well now, just as an additional measure uh, to protect animals. I've got nothing better to do. I don't have my own litter of kids, so I have a litter of cats, you know? <laughs> so, uh, anyways, um, yeah, so Amazon will be looking around there and see what they got. I see a lot of blingy collars um, <clears throat> and some other neat ones on there that I'm considering. And then it uh, looks like uh, one size fits all. That's what I was thinking, but I got a really – I got two big ones. And the Siamese, man, they – they're not big fat cats, but when they're full size, they're much taller than you'd imagine. <clears throat> Isaac Indigo, hey, anything new about eBay secrets? Uh, apparently, Isaac, you remember me from my very old videos um, when I used to have the Houston Rock Shop on eBay, and I made some a limited number of videos about eBay. I haven't really done much with that in almost five years. Um, I no longer use eBay or anything like that because it's just nonsense. I'm not giving away my 20% of my bottom line. The scams are big and the market has been uh, pretty much evaporated by the Chinese uh, market now. So I don't fool with it. Um, I wish I could give you more, Isaac. I appreciate you asking about that, but you're probably asking about a video I made several years ago. Um, but yeah, no more secrets, brother. Even the secrets I gave out at the time, that was probably pre a whole lot of different changes that have happened on eBay. So, so anyways, guys, uh, Monday, my office will be closed for the consulting aspects. I will be doing four cat carriers at a time till we get through the whole herd of cats, all uh, 19. They're all going on the bet and two are having procedures, which I need to monitor them. We're going to work on getting her restored, get her weight up, uh, fix all the cuts and scrapes and other damage that's been done to this cat, and then try to uh, nurse her back to health, improve her spirit. I know her spirit will come back. <clears throat> and uh, one of the cats I'm going to uh, pops, uh, my youngest one. We've had a real problem with him peeing everywhere. I've tried my best to absolve that situation, but unfortunately, it's starting to affect the quality of my home. Um, I don't like uh, doing any kind of procedure in an animal that's unnecessary, but in this case, uh, it's become rather serious for me. I'm spending hundreds of dollars every month having the gentleman come in to DP the walls. Uh, he's peed on everything. He's wrecked part of the carpet. He has pissed on every curtain in the house. You're talking about a couple of grand at this point. And uh, yeah, I understand there's a difference between cats and money, but I got to tell you, it creates an ammonia problem. And uh, yeah, so. We're going to have to curtail that behavior, and if that's what it means to do so for us to live together to make it work, then that's what we're going to have to do. I didn't want to do this, um, but it's going to have to happen. So he will uh, be a eunuch uh, when I get him back. Oh, got a hissy. Looks like Big Papa is still investigating. Let's see what Big Bear is doing. Oh, yeah, he wants to know. Papa's. She's not going to marry you. Going to have to relax, brother. Thankfully, he's uh, none of the cats are in heat. So. <laughs> but he's certainly, uh, he's got an eye for the ladies. And I've got two now. And now that I have two female Siamese, I'm already starting to see that there may be some fricus, uh, friction there. So hopefully the ladies will get along. Otherwise, I'm going to have to get another cat tree. Um, because I don't think they can both share the same space. Um 
Siamese cats are very strong-willed, and uh, they don't share space very easily. Uh, they expect you to be their only owner, and they don't uh, cooperate very well with my other ordinary cats, just one of the milk cats. So uh, they're kind of my dainty girls, and so I've got myself into it with this one. But that's all right. We'll make some adjustments. There goes another $150 in the toilet for another cat tree. <laughs> um, in my candy says, Jay, I want a Siamese cat. I never had one. First, I want to dispel a rumor about these Siamese. People say they're talkers. Yes, they are. But it's like a, it's like a small treasure troll talking to you. When you say talker, like my normal cats, when they want to annoy me, and they do it well, when they want me to leave the office, uh, they start howling. Siamese don't really howl. The ones that I've had, they have this kind of miniature Mickey Mouse voice. It's, it's cute. It doesn't, it, is, it doesn't annoy me at all. So I don't get it when people comment about Siamese being so talky. Um, yeah, they talk, but it's so miniature sounding, but it's not even annoying. Now, my other one, like Pops, Big Bear, Snow Bear, and the rest of them, when they howl, they howl, and they continue to do it because they know that they howl, they get a response out of me. So they train me as much as I train them. Um, but the Siamese do not make, for the most part, they're very quiet. And um, when you're one-on-one, -on -one, because they're one-on-one -on -one cats for sure, uh, more so than all my other cats. They're very one-on-one, -on -one, um, extremely lovable, more lovable than your ordinary cats. This one here, like I said, she about rubbed the fur off of me. Um, my candy says, Pops is an interesting cat. He is a hybrid of a Maine Coots and a normal tabby. And because of that, he's, uh, um, I guess, quarter to half bigger than your standard uh, Tom. So he's a big one. Oh, by the way, uh, we did discover that Big Pops, because of all the weight gain, uh, he's got a thyroid problem. So we'll be talking to the vet. And I think in a couple of months, you will see that Big Pops will be at a normal weight again. And I think that's going to bring some of his life back to him because I'm not going to watch him uh, continue to increase in size. We've adjusted everything we can, so this is an absolute thyroid issue with his blood. So the new medications will be given. He'll start reducing weight, and then I guess he'll be like popcorn everywhere. Uh, he's already a busybody, but I can see that he's not so happy with that weight. Being a big cat plus being also fat doesn't help him, and I want him to live as long as, you know, I want him to be around for as long as possible. <coughs> um... In my case, says cats are very codependent. They pick whoever they choose. Oh, of course. And in some cases, certain groups of my cats will come on the bed at the same time, and then some groups of the other ones will not. Uh, only in one rare, rare case, and I'll tell you about this case. As many of y'all know, I took off to Arkansas. I bought a home in uh, middle Arkansas, bought a bunch of land up there uh, in northern Arkansas, and it was gone for approximately a month. And uh, I did not think that the cats would, you know, be affected by this. So when I got back, one of the first things I noticed was, uh, of course, they wanted to see me. But as the weeks as the weeks have now gone on, I noticed one thing. When I head for that door, almost the entire group of cats follow me. So they do very much take it personally when you disappear. Whether or not they believe they're being put out of your home or whether or not they miss you, uh, there, there's definitely circumstances where they become very upset. My other Siamese, if I leave her out the door more than two hours, she comes in literally just crying, squealing and crying as if I had banned her. So I think that being away from these cats for an extended period of time did have an emotional toll on them. Uh, they were sad for about a week, the whole week I was back. They were glad to see me, but you could just see they, um, they did not hope for the best, I think. And that's my interpretation. I'm only looking at behavior. They don't actually talk to me. If they do, if my cats start talking to me, we need to get me a, a you know, a psychiatric evaluation. <laughs> so, um, uh, in my case, yeah, I heard about that in Arkansas. So, oh, yeah, well, I think everybody heard about me and my midlife crisis in Arkansas, buying land and everything else. Ended up there with a bunch of lunatics in northern Arkansas. Uh, <laughs> got snowed in, iced in. It was me and a group of three stray cats in a worst hotel I ever stayed in my life, trying to make that out there work. And I don't know. If you want the American dream, make sure you know where the hell you're going. Don't buy anything until you go see it. So, yeah, I've liquidated all those properties in Arkansas. I'll let that, I'll let some extremists go move out in the middle of the forest 
that's not for me. Uh, <laughs> I tried that. I'm, I'm glad to be back uh, to my home in Houston and all that. So, well, you know what, guys? I appreciate everybody coming in just to see the kitty cats. Uh, we should uh, do some more videos, you know, here and there for a few minutes about these guys. We're going to be showing more of her because I'm going to show you how you'll see her grow into another, a different cat, a better cat, stronger, bigger, healthy, and her coat will actually shine again. And so I'm looking forward to her restoration. Maybe the next time we see her, she'll be standing very tall and proud in the back of that chair. And I can already see she's going to be a loyalist because she knows I have good. She knows I have a good intent against uh, for her. So, all right. So enjoy talking with y'all and kind of briefly touching base with the cats. And then um, I'll give y'all an update on the community page about her uh, wild visit. And by the way, Banfield Hospital, uh, where I have insurance on all my cats. Um, I am actually the largest cat owner, uh, probably in North Houston. I only mean it in respects of how many animals I actually bring in there. Um, I'm sure there are people that have a great deal more that breed, but I'm not a breeder. Um, I'm, I, I save cats. I don't breed them. Well, at least she's uh, got good jumping skills. <laughs> all right, y'all have a good night. Uh, we'll see y'all again in a couple of days. All right.